In the developer space, people debate whether conferences are actually worth it to attend. I mean, on one hand, you have the ability to connect with people you wouldn't otherwise connect with. You have the ability to learn from those people and then grow in your skill sets, whether though in a particular area or maybe just in your career opportunities. And then on the other hand, it's hard to convince your employer that, hey, going to this conference is actually worth the money. So do you spend your own money? Do you kind of just wait for a conference that better aligns with your employer's uh, understanding of what might be valuable? Where do conferences fall? I've been to several conferences in the tech space across a wide variety of areas, and here is why this PHP conference continues to improve despite other conferences seemingly starting to decrease. And since I'm recording this in my hotel room after Laracon 2025, I figured I'd also give you five things I'm really excited about that were announced at Laracon 2025. So let's dive in. So if you've never been to Laracon, it truly is the PHP conference and probably the conference that can consistently gets better. Why? Because it's not about the talks. Funny enough, that's literally all of the marketing around Laracon, the flagship Laravel event for web artisans. And in the like H1 itself, it says, calling all web artisans, come ready to level up, leave ready to ship. It's really all about that. Not just say retaining and uh, absorbing as much information as you can, not just, you know, meeting with a fantastic amount of people, but having a purpose to go out and do the thing that you just learned about. And so I want to just walk through the things like I'm super excited about, but I also did a ton of recording content of people in the community that came to this conference and why I think it's one of the many reasons that it continues to get better. Why? Because everyone answered the one question that I would ask people of why do you come to Laracon or why should other people come to Laracon? They answered the community. I mean, even there's a whole stories page of Taylor Otwell, the creator of Laravel. Why don't you record your answer to this question? I want you to just listen to this. Hey everyone, this is Taylor Rotwell, the creator of Laravel. Laravel would not be what it is today without developers like you. So we want to hear your story. I'd love to hear how Laravel impacted your project, your business, whatever you've been building with Laravel and how it's impacted your life and career. We'd love to hear about it. So hop on video and share just a few minutes. Could be one minute, could be five minutes and tell us what Laravel has meant for your career, your project, your business. We'd love to hear your story. We can't wait. Thanks. I think conferences are about stories. Why does something impact your career, your business, your personal life? And I think Laracon has done that for so many people. Even the conversations I had after the conference, which is why I'm making this video right now, because I'm amped about the people I got to talk to, knowing that our career trajectory has been significantly changed because of this conference. So why does it make it better? Because of the community. Everyone answered that same question. The reason why I come to Laracon or the reason why you should come to Laracon is because of the community. So why does this PHP conference get this right? Like the whole conference itself has fantastic talks. And I'm going to go through, you know, five things I think uh, were kind of announced at Laracon US 2025 that I think you should be excited about, but it kind of ties into why it's not just the talks. It's everything else around it. I mean, even, even Sam Huckabee on Twitter said, I go to Laracon. I don't write any PHP or work in Laravel at all. I go to conferences for the people. And I think that is something that Laracon and Laravel itself has not just, uh, you know, reluctantly said, hey, I'm okay with this now. It's actually dove into it and said, hey, this is what we're all about. Why does it consistently get better? One, because of the community, but two, because of the talk. So I would be amiss if I didn't say, hey, here's five things I'm super excited for that came out of Laracon 2025. First of all, fantastic talks. We can even go through the talks list right here. Some just absolute legends not just people who you might know from PHP or Laravel, but Adam Wathing, creator of Tailwind CSS. Oh, hey, he came out of the Laravel world. Jeffrey Way, creator of Laracast. And then just so many people who were able to be a part of this event. Each talk was fantastic and their live streams are up on YouTube and there's probably going to be uh, more edited versions of those videos coming soon as well for each individual speaker. But each talk got me excited not just about what there are. And I didn't get the chance to actually watch all of them. So I went back just tonight and I watched all of them just to make sure that I'm telling you exactly what I think is the five best things that I really enjoy. First off, Pest PHP. So Pest is testing for uh, Laravel for PHP and it Pest 4 is going to have browser testing. So you can literally just write this visit, click 
type. And then you can press like all of this is basically browser testing within something like a playwright, but writing it in pest PHP. Absolutely insane. I'm incredibly excited for that. Next up, Livewire updates. Livewire is fantastic. And I think Livewire V4, which Caleb Porzio kind of teased on stream with so many things. And I just wanted to share this clip because I think it's hilarious. I'm a fan of Svelte. I'm a fan of uh, using, you know, things like a plus to say like, hey, this is part of Svelte plus page dot, you know, server dot TS, that kind of thing. Uh, but he went with this uh, Volt emoji, the lightning Volt emoji. So that's what he said. Precedent for an emoji and a file name. Check this out. This is Mojo. It's literally a programming language written by the Swift guy. Look at this file extension. Look at that, <laughs> right? But ultimately, ultimately, it's like, this is fun. Why can't we have nice, fun things? We're all gonna be out of jobs anyway. Like, you, <laughs> right? Like, when did we stop having fun? We're on our way out. Let's have fun on our way out with emojis. All right, I'm gonna keep. Uh, yeah, let's have fun on our way out of emojis. I think, you know, it's, it's a silly little joke about having an emoji in the file name, you know, lightning bolt counter dot blade dot PHP, just to say, hey, this is a live wire component. About the same time, like that embodies exactly what I said of why this is a PHP conference that consistently gets better is because it's not all about, hey, let's write better code that is cleaner and more articulate and let's do all this. Okay, it's, it's part of that because that is part of you know, building better and creating better and being better individuals and, cre uh, and and contributors to our careers and our jobs. But it's also about having fun. It's about being web artisans that just ship and doing it in a way that encourages other people to do the same within that, that community. Okay, so LiveWire 4 is great. That's just a fun little thing. But here's here's a kind of list of LiveWire 4 things that I'm excited about. There's so many. So I just wanted to kind of share this Steve Bauman list. I'll have it in the description as well. But now everything is just class-based Volt components. Well, what you would expect to be class-based Volt components. Now it's just all a single file LiveWire component. And of course, you can use a PHP artisan command to actually split this up. So now you have your script tag, you have your uh, you have your blade view, you have your LiveWire PHP class, and then you also have tests all in one directory. Absolutely insane. It's something like Svelte, and I love it. Uh, next up, you have the ability to have like component.livewire.php or even just like this volt <laughs> or lightning bolt component.blade.php. Awesome. I love it. And like I said, you can split it up. The cool thing about script tags now is you don't have to do all this fancy magic of referencing thing. It just automatically works by calling this in JavaScript. So livewire, the server functions, and also livewire, the, the JavaScript that is powered by Alpine is just going to be a lot easier to write and to kind of intermingle. And then just a huge, massive push by Caleb and the Livewire team to say, hey, let's just use the things that PHP 8.4 gives out of the box, like setters and getters. So you don't have to do uh, all this crazy stuff now with, with locked components or locked variables. Now you just use this setter and getter from PHP. Two more big things from Livewire, and then we'll get into the last three things that I'm excited about. Uh, but you can use slots now in Livewire components. Again, all this is v4, not yet released, no release date yet. But the two biggest ones is Blaze, which is basically a way to pre-compile and code fold your Blade components. So now they are insanely fast. So Blade components rendering that 329 milliseconds now down to 19 milliseconds. Absolutely crazy. And then islands, being able to section off parts of your component that then run. This is different than lazy loading. This is particular things that then are only exist within that component, that, that section of a component. So that way it doesn't impact the other components while it's loading or processing or pulling. And lastly, the keynote on Monday, and you can find that on the stream. That's that, that's that day one stream, five hours and 50 minutes is roughly about where it starts. Again, the recorded videos will be coming out soon. But in this blog is everything that the Laravel team announced. And there's three things I kind of want to point your eyes to that I am super excited about. 
The first thing is pricing changes for Laravel Cloud. I know there's a lot of people who want to use cloud, but they're like, hey, I, I don't want to pay to use domain names, for example, because I, I, I just want to try out and like pay as I, I pay as you go. That's what it is. The sandbox plan is pay as you go, uh, but I want domain names. Well, now you can have that. So you, now the starter plan, which is formerly the sandbox plan, has no subscription fee. It supports custom domains, hibernation enabled by default, and resource size caps to minimize costs. So the whole goal is basically being able to allow you, the user, to save a lot more money while also having the ability to use custom domains to do all of that. There's so many things I'm excited about for Forge, uh, and there's so many that I could barely list, so make sure to check out the blog post that's listed in the description below or that full uh, section of the live stream for this particular Forge keynote release, but really it all comes down to you shipping faster on a Forge account. You still connect everything within your API to say, hey, I want to connect to my DigitalOcean account, my Hetzner account, that kind of thing. But there's zero downtime deployments. There's going to be a VPS server that, that kind of cuts down server provisioning and everything like that. Um, but then also just being able to have, uh, yeah, hosted on Forge.com domain. So that way you don't have to set up DNS and everything just kind of works out of the box to share with someone quickly. I like this stuff for things like demos where I'm like, hey, this is something I'm trying out. Do you like it? Do you not? Let's see. And now Forge just makes all of that easier, whether whether it's the VPS or if I'm just doing it within my own, you know, DigitalOcean or Headstone account. It's it's great. It's cheap. It's fun. It's easy. But man, open source stuff that were that was announced and kind of released are the things that I am incredibly excited about. One is Laravel Boost, which is a, a AI powered dev assistant that is that has version docs that can use those docs to then curate specifically crafted Laravel AI rules, whether you're using Cloud Code, Juni, um, you know, a Cursor, whatever that might be. And so Boost then powers this MCP SDK for your Laravel app. I can't wait to start playing around with this. Uh, it's going to be coming soon. The beta is probably going to be releasing soon. I can't wait to make a video on this, honestly. And then Wayfinder and Ranger, which are kind of like tightly knit. It's basically, think of TRCP, but for Laravel. So now your whole application from back end to front end is incredibly type safe. Wayfinder already existed to be able to have these back end route definitions sent to your client side as these type safe functions. So that way you can have these, these form requests, these inertia props, enums and more. And so that's kind of like continuing to improve, but also Ranger, which kind of adds on top of that to say, Hey, you want your, your models, your routes, uh, enums in your application. Do you want types for those? Well, Hey, here you go. Have them just go for it. And so now in your, you know, your, your react inertia, or even just react separate from inertia, your react view, whatever that might be, anything TypeScript, you automatically get these types delivered to you however you want to use them. So you can have them generate TypeScript, API documentation, or XML based on what it finds. Ranger is the finder of those. And then you can figure out what do you want to do with them after that. Each Laracon continues to get better, not just because the talks are better and because there's so many things that the Laravel team and others continue to improve in the ecosystem of, of ways to make things easier for developers to ship things, but also because of the community, because it's, it's crafted around this idea that you as a developer have value that you as a developer are creative and can build amazing things. And regardless of whether you use PHP or not, regardless of whether you've ever built something in Laravel or not, not only are you, uh, can you find value in the community that Laravel and Laracon provide, but you as an individual, as a developer, can then go and do amazing things within your community, within your development space, within your team. And so what things are you shipping? Are you building? Are you making? Whether that's now, whether that's later, whether that's with Laravel, whether that's not, I hope you keep creating.